So I've owned a local game store for some time and I can tell you that it is very hard to sell. And sell it, buying cards is super easy. Any dumbass can do it. Selling cards is very difficult. So when I look at backyard breaks and their skill set is they can sell. I'll just take one example of a product. Uh, what is it? Spectrum, Spectrum basketball hobby. On StockX, it's about $750 that you can buy one, a box. And then for them, they sell it for $1,150 for more than $400 or $400 over the cost that you can get for StockX, which is as a percentage over the StockX cost over 50% margins. Well, 33% margin, depends on how you calculate which number you're gonna divide the D use as the denominator. There's a lot we can learn from them. There is a whole lot we can learn from them. There's a lot that I learned. I watch their streams almost every night and I take notes about how they're trained, what they say. And further, you know, they give compliments to the whales. They acknowledge the whale as soon as they come in and they say, oh, how's your day? They, they acknowledge the whale, if they have a child. They get sent pictures of the whale's children playing or as costumes or whatever it is, right? and they really engage in the life. So it's a very emotional connection that the whales will have. Let me go ahead and tell you like how much money they make. They make probably a million dollars a channel per channel a day. Um, they're ripping at least that in revenue and sometimes they rip a lot more when they have a quote movie party. They're putting on a movie, they can rip upwards of, you know, depending on who's putting on the movie. And if they have the eminence, they have the flawless and they have the national treasures, they can rip, you know, upward, one person can rip upwards of $100,000. Now let's talk about sales. If a real estate agent were to sell a half a million dollar home every day, we would consider that real estate agent a star, right? I mean, over a year, uh, assuming they work uh, 365 days, which Backyard Breaks does, and remember it has free channels, then we would think, wow, that real estate agency of whatever, how many people it is, they were able to sell a half a million dollar home to a million dollar home every single day of the year. And maybe even more, maybe a $2 million home. We would think that would be a very successful real estate agent. I don't think anyone would have any doubt that you know that real estate agent is agency is crushing it. Now, what if I gave you a more impossible circumstance instead of selling real estate, which has actual value, they are going to sell cards. And not only are they going to sell cards, they're going to sell these cards at two times the market price. And the platform they sell cards on is going to pay them to sell cards and they become not only the biggest channel, but the second biggest channel and also the third biggest channel on this giant platform, which is valued at 3.7 billion with a B dollars. Remember what not 3.7 billion dollars. I think the last investor was Google. Google is not dumb, right? They understand what this is. Um, and without backyard breaks, who is the number one, number three, I think number five, Whoa, I mean, they're gonna be the first one to hit over 100,000 by this time this video goes live. They probably already hit it because they're very close right now. What a company, right? What a company. And you know what? Nobody talks about diversity. No one talks about minorities. You know, it's just a bunch of dudes, right? Uh, breaking and nobody cares about that type of stuff. And so right now, you know, they don't have like whatnot doesn't have like, oh, hey, these are the diversity breakers and we're going to put them on, you know, no, no, that like YouTube does, right? YouTube is always promoting certain, you know, diversity channels. At least that's for me. I mean, I, I, that's all I see nowadays. Um, and they've been able to take advantage and really have a dominance in a basically a marketplace where there isn't, you know, whatnot is going to favor them over any other seller because they, without them, they are nothing. What not is nothing. What not would not have a $3.7 billion. I would argue it wouldn't even be $1 billion valuation. You know, it was, I think it was 1.5 to 3.7, but even then backyard breaks was, you know, what, what you don't understand is it was almost unusable when it first came out. 
It took a very long time to load. I remember it. I was like, okay, this is exciting. Let me go on a platform and let's see how it works. And live shopping is really big in China. Let me see if this is the next big thing. And I didn't think it would work because it was almost unusable. So I downloaded it, then I deleted it. These guys stuck with it. They caught lightning in a bottle. And regardless if you like them or not, they're very entertaining and they have a lot of loyal buyers and that's all you really need. You know, at the end of the day, um, they sell more than any local game store could ever sell in one day. They sell more in one day on one channel, <laughs> on the worst channel, than a local game store can sell in a year physical location. And that is why they're so interesting. I'm gonna break down some of the numbers. I'm gonna break down their profit margins, which is really easy. You just look at their for sale, you screenshot the for sale, then you type it on the StockX or eBay, and then you see how much you could get the product for. So then you can see what the margin and the profit is. I don't think they're paying WhatNot any money. I think WhatNot is paying them money. So it's basically per profit. It would be insane. I mean, they seem like smart guys and honest to God, what not should be paying them a shit ton of money. It should not be that they should not be paying fees or whatnot. If that is the case, I don't know if that is the case. Um, and then by not, you know, what not paying them money, they have a competitive advantage over every other breaker. They still have room to expand. They obviously are going to do Pokemon. They have started doing Pokemon. They probably they talk they started doing Star Wars, so they might do non you no know, non sports, non Pokemon like collectors, right? Star Wars. Uh, they started doing masterpieces, which is a pretty interesting set, you know, higher end. Um, and I don't think they have any problem ripping Yu Gi Oh or Magic the Gathering or whatever it is. So they have expansion in the different card games and even outside of card games, they could do Funko figures, luxury items, whatever it is, right? And they have a even simpler expansion, which is, you know, obviously, you know, even more lucrative if you really think about what they could expand into. And, and that simple expansion is even outside whatnot, right? Maybe they have exclusive contract, but by limiting themselves to whatnot, that's a huge limitation on platform. You're limiting platform. Again, they do go on Twitch, they don't go on TikTok. The other really clever idea that I would probably kind of, if I were them, I would look really heavily into is until like the whole social justice diversity thing that would happen, because it happens to every platform. It happens to Twitter, it happens to YouTube, it happens to TikTok, right? Where, you know, these platforms are promoting certain, uh, when you have a monopoly on whatnot, now's the time to negotiate with them. Uh, hard negotiate and real and then tell them hey we're gonna I mean I don't know how it would work but I think they could get a piece of whatnot at 3.7 billion dollars yeah whatnot needs them they are very important to whatnot system ecosystem so if I were the owner grant I would basically say go to whatnot and say you know what I want to renegotiate the contract I want to own 10 percent of whatnot 10% of whatnot, if in case you want to know, at $3.7 billion is $370 million. And I think it would be a steal. Be like, here, we're going to stick with you for the next five years, five to 10 years, but we want vesting interest into the actual company. If not, we're going to create our own whatnot. And they would do better because whatnot doesn't bring anybody new. It only gives it a platform when you bring people to whatnot. And that's whatnot's major weakness. So if there is a competitor, as soon as eBay comes competitor, eBay, it's kind of like what happens to creators, right? Content creators, uh, when they fight over Ninja, they fight over XQC and so on. They give Valkyrie and 100T. You know, when, when a new organization like Mixer comes along and they're like, oh, we really need somebody. Oh, let's grab the biggest guy, Ninja. Then, you know, Ninja's contract was over $100 million. The real play isn't like breaking cards, even though they're making millions of dollars every week breaking cards and profit, I believe. The real play is that contract. And if whatnot doesn't offer it to them, I'm sure eBay would be more than happy to offer that contract to them. And for whatnot, because it's a new company, 
the real play is to get equity in that company. Let me know if uh, you guys need a lawyer down in Florida, right? Because I think these guys could be, if not already multi-millionaires, I think they could be close to a billionaire when it's all said and done. Because remember, WhatNot is valued at $3.7 billion and growing. So you grab 10% of it, WhatNot becomes $37 billion. Well, you have $3.7 billion. Even if you had 5%, you would still have over a billion. And chain, obviously <laughs> a lot of chains. Hi guys.